For more, we're now joined by Heather McPherson, the NDP's foreign affairs critic, also the MP for Edmonton Strathcona, and Mike Morris, Green Party MP for the riding of Kitchener Centre in Ontario. Hello to both of you. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me. Uh, oh, very happy to have both of you. Listen, before we begin, we, we do want to note the fact that we did invite the Conservatives to take part in today's discussion, but they declined our offer. But, you know, with that, I, I, I want to really begin here with your reaction to the comments that we heard from the Foreign Affairs Minister today. Uh, Melanie Jolie saying that Canada is calling on both Israel and Hamas to de-escalate actions. Heather, uh, is that encouraging to hear that from Melanie Jolie? You know, listen, Michael, we've, we've been calling for a ceasefire since the very beginning. And I, I have to say, you know, right now, there are Palestinians who are losing their lives. The, the, the security of Israel is not being protected by the, by the death of, of civilians. We've heard from, from independent civil society organizations that over 2,000 Palestinian children have died. So, so no, what we need right now is a ceasefire. We need a ceasefire so that humanitarian aid can get in, so that people can get the, so the food, the medicine, the water that they need. Um, and then there needs to be a political, a political solution to this. There needs to be, you know, everyone needs to come to the table and we need to have a, a political solution because there is no military solution that doesn't result in the more deaths of innocent people. Uh, Mike, what do you say to, to what we heard from the Foreign Affairs Minister today? Well, I just strongly agree with Heather. We need to be seeing a call for a ceasefire from the government of Canada. It's uh, at this point we're seeing right now, every 15 minutes, a Palestinian child is dying and Canada has a, has a role to play here as a middle power to have our, our voices heard. And so uh, to me and, and to many colleagues, as I, you've uh, noted, this uh, letter that's gone out across party lines, um, this is uh, past time to be calling for a cease a ceasefire, and uh, we're going to continue to call for for that. Okay, let me stay with you, Mike, on this one, because you, you actually signed that letter by MPs, and, and Heather, you did not, which I'll get to you in a second. But, you know, Mike, when, when you look at the letter that you signed, in some ways it seems to, to be that what we're hearing from the Foreign Affairs Minister is perhaps more cautious language as opposed to direct language. But are you at all encouraged by the action that you're seeing right now? Uh, well, again, our call remains the same. Certainly, it's a step in the right direction to talk about de-escalation. We've heard uh, the federal government talk about all the international law to be followed by all parties. Uh, you know, that's also an encouraging sign in the right di uh, direction. Um, but, you know, I, when, when we see uh, MPs from across parties coming together in this way, it's, it's recognizing the devastation right now in Gaza. Uh, recognizing that uh, we're seeing, you know, over 5,000 Palestinians now uh, dead, and and those deaths, as you heard uh, from my colleague uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, are not doing anything when it comes to ensuring that uh, we keep Israel safe. And of course, Israel has the right to defend itself, uh, but certainly, uh, yes, yeah, stand by that call for a ceasefire. We'd like to see the federal government. Uh, step up to to that mm -hmm. uh, and Heather you did not sign the letter for 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 very specific reasons can you talk to us about that yeah of course you know some of my colleagues did sign the letter the letter was that was drafted by the Palestinian friendship group in Parliament uh, I didn't sign the letter because the NDP position has has been much stronger and it's been much stronger for much longer we've called for a ceasefire some time ago at the very beginning of, of the siege of Gaza um, you know we've been talking about the need for in international law to be protected through the International Criminal Court the International Court of Justice we've talked about the need for humanitarian corridors for humanitarian aid to get to the people that need it urgently right now so for for us I mean I looked at the letter and, and calling for a ceasefire 10, 12 days in is great and it's important that we get that, but there is so many more things that the Canadian government can be doing. There's so many more things that the Canadian government can be doing to listen to, you know, Jewish Canadians, Muslim Canadians, Palestinian Canadians who are asking for a ceasefire, who are asking for more action from this government, that are wanting the government to use its 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 diplomatic ability to move forward and and, and work towards a more peaceful outcome for everyone and to, to ultimately stop the death and the destruction that's happening right now. 
You know, Mike uh, referenced uh, Israel's right to protect itself, Heather, and fight for its survival. And when you look at the October 7 attacks, it also left children dead, babies mm -hmm. dead, uh, people yeah. raped, over 200 uh, hostages taken, according to the latest number. What do you say to Israelis who are still feeling that pain? And while they might hear the humanitarian argument being made, it's not as if Hamas considered the humanity of the people who lost their lives in that attack. No, absolutely. And listen, let me tell you, I, I, my heart goes out to every single one of those Jewish Canadian families that have been impacted. The, the signs, the, the, the things that we've seen, the, the, the way that the, the people that were taken, that were murdered, were treated, is just so heartbreaking. And I don't know if there is a community in this country who hasn't been touched by that horror, that, that absolute disregard for humanity that Hamas showed. But, but there's something that I think needs to be made very clear, and I don't think it's been made clear. Palestine, Palestinians are not Hamas. And punishing Palestinians and killing Palestinian children is not going to hurt Hamas. That they're not the same thing. And I, I can't seem to, you know, I can't say it any clearer than that. Uh, Israel has every right to defend itself. Has every right to to grieve for this horrendous terrorist attack. But but. They're, they need to fight against Hamas. They need to be fighting against Hamas, not against the Palestinian people. Because there are, there are children in Palestine that had nothing to do with this. There are families that, that have nothing to do with this, who have lost their lives, lost their homes, lost their schools. You know, we really do need to make it very clear. Hamas is not the Palestinian people, and the Palestinian people need to be protected, just like every other person around this world deserves to be protected. Uh, Mike, I'm quickly losing time, but, uh, but I would like uh, you to have the opportunity to add to what we just heard from Heather. What do you say to, to, to people who make the argument, it's not as if Hamas cared about the humanity of the people that they killed? Well, I actually think you've heard a very strong uh, argument from uh, Heather. I think this is exactly what myself and others have been saying really clearly that Hamas is not representative of the Palestinian people. They carried out a terrorist attack. We condemn it in the strongest possible terms. And we need to ensure that all parties are following international law. Uh, obviously, Hamas's attack was a clear violation of international law. We condemn it. Any attack on civilians is that. And so we also need to ensure that the state of Israel follows international law. And we need to uh, to call that out and, and calling for a ceasefire is is one way of doing so. And there are other potential uh, potential solutions. For example, in 1956, when we when Lester B. Pearson helped to create the uh, UN peace peacekeeping force, there are multi lateral options for countries to come together to root out Hamas without losing, uh, you know, having children uh, in 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 Gaza dying every every fifth, 15 minutes. Uh, Heather, you know, before we're done, I do need to ask you one more thing, though, because Jagmeet Singh did release a, a letter tonight calling for a one on one meeting with the prime minister to talk about a ceasefire. Uh, I'm wondering if you know of any acknowledgement of that letter, whether or not that meeting will happen, uh, what your hopes of that meeting might be. I've not heard anything yet about that, about whether that meeting is going forward. I certainly hope that the Prime Minister uh, takes the request of Jagmeet Singh as uh, our leader um, seriously and agrees to sit down and, and have that very important meeting. Canada needs to do more and we, we, we need to do it urgently. Uh, people's lives are on the, on the line and, and Palestinian people can't wait. Heather McMearson, uh, Mike Morris, thank you for the time this evening. Really appreciate both of you taking it. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.